Well, you're Mr. Controversy. You know, you, you stir up the devil, don't you? Well, and you, um, I, I stir up a lot of people. That's perfectly true. But I think that part of the problem of the church historically has been that if you don't have any movers and shakers and nobody dissenting and nobody pointing things out, then you don't have any teaching ministry in the church because you teach by contrast. And um, the Christian church, his days of the church father till today, has been controversial. Uh, there's nothing wrong with controversy for the sake of truth. It's controversy just for the sake of controversy that's a sin. Yes. And controversy that speaks the truth in love is a biblical command. And um, at Christian Research Institute, which uh, uh, I direct, uh, we specialize in dealing with the cults, the occult, non-Christian religions, and apologetics, which is the defense of Christianity. Now, the gentleman who was on before me uh, was talking about Berkeley. And uh, you're asking him questions about what the attitude of the professors was and so forth. And uh, it's obvious that they're secularists. I know I've taught in university and college <coughs> and seminary for many years. And uh, they obviously are antagonistic to theism and to Christianity. Now, what would it be like if the church never ever gave anybody any answer? Supposing all you did was go on television and smile at the camera and say, Jesus loves you. And the person out there says, yeah, but what am I going to do with this contradiction between this passage and that passage? Jesus loves you. <laughs> what am I going to do about... I mean, this passage obviously teaches that Jesus is, is uh, the Archangel Michael. Yeah. Jehovah's Witness says that. Says, well, Jesus loves you. We're going to pray for you. You know what you're going to do? <clears throat> you're going to turn off everybody because people want answers to their questions. I do the Bible Answer Man program, 75 radio markets, uh, about 11 hours a week, live. All across the country, in our major radio markets, we're getting a marvelous controlled survey without asking for it. And you know as a former pastor what this means. People are asking the same questions from Jacksonville, Florida, to Raleigh, North Carolina, to New York City, to um, Massachusetts, New England, across the Midwest, Northwestern states, all the way across the country. Everybody is asking the same questions. Now, when you get a closed experiment like that, where everybody is asking the same questions, then you know that the church is not answering them. Because if they were getting answers to those questions, they wouldn't be calling in my program or Bob Larson's or other shows that specialize in questions and answers and saying anything. <clears throat> They'd be getting all the information at home, but they're not getting it at home. Do you think it's because a lot of them don't know the answers to that, and that's why they, they go with the thing, uh, Jesus <clears throat> loves you? Or I, think, I think it's worse than that, Charlene. I think that we've entered into an era which leading to the great apostasy and the rise of the Antichrist, whether you're pre-tribulation, mid-tribulation, <clears throat> or post-tribulation, you're going to get there one way or the other. Sure. Uh, it's all pure tribulation when you get down to it. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, the truth of the matter is, leading up to this, the scripture says, and we don't pay attention to it, that there will be a lulling of the mind of the church, that the church will accept evil as truth, that the church will accept false prophets rather than true prophets, that when we speak against error, as Paul was doing in his day, who was coming after him? The Corinthians, the Galatians, everybody wanted a scalp. John speaks against the Antichrist. Who's the bad guy? John. Who's the bad guy? Paul. But these are the apostles. Now, in the entire history of the church, I think we discussed part of this one time before, mm -hmm. God raises up apostles in the beginning, prophets, and then the church fathers, then after them the reformers, and so forth. What was the purpose? It was to bring the church back to the path she deviated from, theologically. Now, we have deviated in a massive way today. When you say we, are you talking about the evangelical born-again world? The evangelical world? hyphen charismatic churches. <clears throat> we're not talking about the liberals, we're talking about the nope. conservatives. Well, we don't even discuss the liberals because, no, because they're they, they have nothing anyhow. Right. So wh what, right. Are, what are you wasting your time for? I came from liberalism. Uh -huh. I was educated in Roman Catholic schools and I was raised in the Episcopal Church. I was designed to be an Episcopal priest by my uh, dean of our cathedral. I would have been accepted 
he spent some time explaining to me that the Bible couldn't be relied upon always. And I knew better, even though I was a youngster, I knew better than that. So I turned away from that. I found out what liberalism was. I was educated in a liberal background, liberal theology. Now, I know the liberals are bankrupt. Mm -hmm. I know the cults are bankrupt. Mm -hmm. I know the world religions are bankrupt. Otherwise, God wouldn't have sent Jesus Christ into the world to save us. Right. He would have gotten there by Buddha, Mahoraster, Confucius, or your Uncle Harry. <laughs> but, God, but God loved the world and sent his son into the world to save it. Now, what's happening, this is true, what's happening is a marked reticence on the part of the professing church <clears throat> to call the proverbial spade a spade. We see Christian leaders on television, and they're asked direct questions on national television. I mean, right out in the open, specifically. Do you believe this? I won't answer them. You have such leaders as Norman Vincent Peale, big power of positive thinking image. Mm -hmm. And Peale goes on the Donahue show. That's coast to coast. That's the biggest talk show you've got. Mm -hmm. And they got to discussing Christianity. And Donahue asked him point blank, is the only way to get to heaven Jesus? No, good, no. I mean, after all, if you're sincere, you're, what's going on here? This is the former pastor of Marble Collegiate Church. I mean, this is a leader in the uh, Protestant, American Protestantism. Mm -hmm. And they get in the middle of the dialogue uh, on the subject of uh, what people believe, and they're criticizing Dr. Peel for some of his views, some of the people, and Donnie, you saw the hell with them. This is, this is the, the people that are criticizing false doctrine. Mm -hmm. To hell with them. Mm -hmm. Peel says, right, to hell with them. Well, I mean, doesn't anybody ever any more get excited in the presence of evil. Nobody wants to come out and say what's wrong for fear that they're going to be criticized, for fear that they'll lose their constituency. See? Now, the truth is that if you preach the gospel like it is, and you defend the gospel the way you're supposed to, God will take care of your finances and your constituency. Amen. He promises to. Sure. See? You, you do not... Uh, That's good. You, you, you do not get up and tell people what they want to hear to get their pocketbook. Are you suggesting that's going on today? I know it's going on. I mean, I can turn on my television set and I can see it. I mean, there's one major TV network, not this one, Christian TV network, where the host has got to have his his uh, tear ducts connected to his kidneys because nobody could cry that much. <laughs> I mean, how could, you, how could you possibly miss? It's every other minute. Money, money, money. Well, there's nothing wrong with asking for money for the Lord's work. But when that is predominant in your approach... I, I it is to, a turn off. Sure it is. When I went to, uh, yeah. when I went to a big TV network not long ago, I won't discuss which one for the sake of public relations, uh, I went there, and um, uh, they told me that I should speak as the Spirit leads me. Well, that's fair, isn't it? The Spirit leads you, you should speak that way, right? Okay? So, as I got up to get on the stage, they handed me a slip of paper, like this. <clears throat> it said, try and be positive in everything you say. <laughs> <laughs> I want you to tell me how it's positive to tell somebody they're going to hell. Tell me. <laughs> How positive can you get? You're going to hell. <laughs> You're going to hell. That's positive, huh? Of course not. You're going to have to say, hey, I love praying for you, but, you know, if you, if you follow this path, you're lost. But <clears throat> don't want to do that. So be positive in everything you say. Do not mention Jehovah's Witnesses, Mormons, or Christian science. Now, here is an internationally recognized cult expert. They said. They introduced me that way. Bring me on the program, fly me 3,000 miles, sit me down, and before I go on, they hand me a slip of paper that says, be careful what you say about your expertise. Huh? Heavy. Now, he it's not only heavy, it is what nobody wants to say. It's censorship. Sure. Jehovah's Witnesses say that the Trinity is pagan nonsense, that Jesus Christ is the Archangel Michael, that his death on the cross did, wasn't even on a cross, it was on a torture stake. It didn't pay for your sins, you've got to work for it. And when he rose from the dead, he arose as a ghost. Plus the fact that he came back in 1914 invisibly and has been running the kingdom from Brooklyn. That ought to turn, that ought to turn you off immediately, okay? Then you've Brooklyn? Got, then you've got the Mormon church. 
what's behind it. Mormon Church says, as God was, as God is, man, may be, as man is, God once was. As God is, man may become. You can become a God. Mormonism. Jesus Christ is a spirit brother of Lucifer who became the devil. They teach that? Oh, yes. Preach the truth, it'll automatically counteract error, leave the personalities and the names out. You don't agree with it? No, not only do I not agree with it, I don't know one major theologian in the history of the entire Christian church that will agree with it. I don't know one commentary that will exegete <clears throat> Matthew 15 to teach that. Now, if you really want to get technical on what the texts say, 47% of the New Testament, according to this, who's the greatest, one of the greatest living New Testament scholars, is apologetic, which means defending Christianity. Yes. If you could just turn the truth loose and let it do its job and not defend it, why do you have all the admonitions in the Scripture? Contend earnestly for the faith, once for all delivered unto the saints. For the time will come when men will not put up with sound doctrine. They shall gather to themselves teachers who will tickle their ears, and the truth of God will be turned into mythology. Reprove them, rebuke them, exhort them with patience and teaching. Where's the rebuke? Where's the reproof? Where's the exhortation? Now, what happened to Peter? Uh, chewing away in Second Peter on the people that are pushing the truth into the background. Sure. What about Paul? The people who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. What is censorship but the suppression of truth? If you can't speak, you're violating the First Amendment of the Constitution. Mm -hmm. I'm not attacking the cults. I spent 35 years of my life bringing people out of cults to Jesus Christ. Which is a great ministry. Mm -hmm. Fantastic ministry. I'm not going to attack them. Yeah. I love them. I love them. But you're going to show where they're in error. But if I don't show where they're in error, then you're wrong. If the, right, I'm wrong. And if the Trump on certain sound, mm -hmm. says Paul, mm -hmm. then how will you prepare yourself for battle? You see, the meth methodology and the philosophy governing the Christians today in many areas is there is no battle. The only battle you've got is the battle that you don't have enough faith. Or the only battle you've got is you haven't got a new Mercedes. Or you're not healthy enough. These are the battles they're fighting. Or whether Jesus came after the tribulation before it or in the middle of it. Mm -hmm. uh, they're majoring in the minors. Mm -hmm. And they're forgetting that if you don't defend the gospel, you're disobeying Christ. I am telling the truth. Right. Well, God help me, as Luther said, I can do nothing else.